There's a story that Troy told me last night, I wanna say. One of his friends was in the polar vortex that we had this this past winter, which was like 40 below. I don't know if it was that cold, but it was cold. Uh, Indiana. Indiana, it was in Indiana, Indiana. Yeah, dead of winter. That, that whole thing that went through the Midwest this winter as far as the freezing temp. It was cold, yeah. and they had a house to stay in. They ditched the house they were in to go back out to their van because they had Troy's system in there because they said the van was more comfortable to sleep in. guys look at this this is now oh by the way I am in the shop with a lot of other people because that's how we roll here if anybody else makes it into the frame they're more than welcome to join me on this build series this guy behind me is definitely gonna be in it it's Troy the one and only Troy Holland owner and operator of van life tech I'm wearing his hat right now that he has so graciously given me, but. Don't tell anybody. So today's episode is really of what Troy did. I didn't really do much today, did I, Troy? I was like a glorified assistant. I handed you a lot of tools. That's true. Ooh. That's an important job. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of really what this is going on and what's happening. This is a DIY build, but yet I didn't really do much on this portion of the DIY. So I did get radiant floor heating in the van done by Van Life Tech. This is so weird to do this with a lot of other people around that are so quiet. You guys don't have to be quiet. Ah! Thank you. If you guys have seen the live stream, uh, I am here at Rooney Racing. I am here with Travis and Lauren from Our Viewfinder. I'm here with Tiny Watt Solar. What? Tiny Watt! <laughs> Uh, I guess Troy from Van Life Tech. There's a lot of people here, so it's kind of crazy. Crazy! Troy is still working behind me, which is fantastic because we're finished. This is like the end of the day. It's been a long two days. This is a radiant floor heating, and uh, maybe Troy can explain this a little bit better. Give your system in like two sentences. Can you do that? Two sentences? Probably not. <laughs> three, maybe. All right, can you do three, maybe <clears throat> four? I'm gonna go this side so you guys can see. I'm going long story on. short, in the past life, I used to be a mechanical contractor. I used to do commercial and residential radiant heating, design, system, installation, all the things. Got tired of being cold in my van, decided to fix it. What we have is what's called a two-stage uh, heat system. So the first stage is the radiant floor, and it is a hydronic radiant floor, no electric warming mats, nothing like that. I'm gonna take this off so we can get closer to Troy. It's all a hydronic system, which means it's hot fluid, uh, like the coolant that would go through your radiator in your vehicle. It's hydronic. We end up with about 150 feet of hose in the floor with our proprietary floor system. That's the first stage. So the system will automatically try to use the floor as the primary heat source to heat the van. Uh, you have full control over the minimum and maximum temperatures on the floor. So you can decide you like toasty, toasty toes and just keep it a certain temperature all the time if you want. Hell yeah! But it'll use the floor first, try and maintain the air temperature. If for some reason it's super cold out or your doors are open or you just turn the system on and the floor is taking time to get up to temperature, we have a second stage which is a fan coil unit. So it uses the same hydronic heating fluid, but runs it through a fan coil, kind of like your heater core in your car, really. Which is so. right there by your right knee. Yep, that's that, so. That's a temporary um, situation, guys, that's not. Yeah, we that's... had to get Jared, he's not building his van yet, so a lot of times we'll put the floor in, do the rest of the build, come back and put in the rest of the mechanicals. We're not temping his mechanicals in, but we're putting them in a way where he can build around them when he gets to his cabinetry. Kind of trying to keep it tight in here. Yeah, that's the heating system, and then the same system also provides uh, domestic hot water or your potable hot water. We have a four gallon storage tank uh, for that and so you always have four gallons of water ready at any time but the system will actually make unlimited hot water only limited by the size of your fresh water tank once everything's up to temp. Whole house heating we call it provides unlimited domestic hot water as well. How many kits is this in right now? How many vans is, is your um, kit in? It's probably in about 20 vans. 20-ish? Yeah. We've been um, in full R&D mode for about three years. The latest evolution of the system we've been through you know, five different pump manufacturers, two different heater manufacturers, um, two different fan coil manufacturers. These are custom made for us now so that we can put high quality stuff out in the field. Cause I was actually part of a startup one time where we had a hundred units out in the field that needed constant maintenance. And I never want to do that kind of thing again. And you said you've spent three years on this dude. Yeah. And this is a yeah. very, uh, we cannot show the installation of the floor because it is so proprietary that I will get sued. So I'm not doing that, but We're, uh, <laughs> there might be more to see on that. We're seeking a uh, patent protection on the floor system itself. And yep. then a lot of the other stuff is just kind of our, their standard heating principles. If you've been involved in hydronic heating, but, um, the components have been 
especially either designed or, or built for application uh, like this. So what that means is, is that, um, including the coolant heater, Come on down. which is uh, coolant heater itself runs about uh, 20 or 30 watts in steady state mode. And then all the rest of the mechanicals put together about 10 watts. So we're well under 70 watts total, even during startup phase on the heater. And then um, we run ambient about 30 or 40 watts of power consumption. So we got some visitors. I think they're gonna try and poke into the side door. It looks like it. You guys wanna say hi? Ladies. Hello. Look at this. We have Savannah from Tiny Watt Solar and Hello. Lauren Fletcher from Lauren Hello. Fletcher Photography. Lauren Fletcher Photography. Gonna go grab pizza for all you boys. What? Right. You guys are now in the build episode of. Oh, you guys are amazing. Bye, ladies. Oh, you. Yeah. All right, so that was more than two sentences by a long way. So but you know what? I think you gave a fantastic description. Now. I'm going, guys, I'm going to get this a lot. I'm going to flip this camera around. We're going to go back on the tripod here. I know for a fact I'm going to get a ton of inquiries about this cost, um, how to install it. Is it DIY build? I'm gonna try and go over all that right now because honestly, I get hit up probably daily about this system ever since I told everybody I was gonna put this in my vans. How about you correct me if I, okay, if I screw it up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right guys, so uh, where can you get it first and foremost? Is it a DIY kit? It is, it is not a DIY kit per se. Troy has a very intricate system on how his system does get installed, therefore, you have to have one of his affiliate upfitters install the system. And why is that? It's so important because if it is installed wrong or if there's one ounce that is incorrect, the entire system fails. I was extremely lucky to have Troy actually do it for me, the CEO of the company. Luckily, we are friends. You're not gonna get Troy on every install. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Is that sort of correct? Yeah, it's mostly correct. I'd say that um, it's not that it's super complicated. It's just that a bunch of different things going on. There's hydronic heating principles, there's controller and wiring principles, there's tubing installation principles. And it's, it's not that it's overly complicated. It's just that take a heating circulator. If you install it in the right orientation, it can last for five years. If you install it in the wrong orientation, the bearings will blow out in two months. It's stuff like that where it kind of comes back just to service calls and maintenance where I want to make sure that it's installed properly and so that's actually why we're down here. We were using Jared's build um, as a as a training for the Rooney Racing guys. So Rooney that's Racing, right. they can they can fully install systems now. And just that way you know that it's installed properly and it comes with a two year warranty if it's installed from one of my installers. So um, one of my affiliate upfitters. Two year warranty guys, that's amazing. No really it's it's designed to to be virtually maintenance free. I'm toying around with a DIY application because there is a lot of competent folks out there that you know if they were gonna install a coolant heater anyway in their vehicle or if they've done car alarms or any of that kind of stuff there's there's some crossover on those things so if you're super interested in DIY you can hit me up about it um, but just know that it's not like a it won't ever be a click here buy it now kind of thing and then it'll never be sold on Amazon guys I'm yes, sorry exactly. it's just the way that uh, Troy does business and I respect him completely for that and I'm hopefully all of you respect that so Brent Rooney here at Rooney Racing He is a uh, affiliate. Uh, I am going to plug him because we're in his shop and uh, he did Troy did train uh, Brent and his team on how to do the entire system, which is pretty cool Actually, I got to see how it all went down and maybe if you guys pay me enough money I might show you that footage. I'm just kidding that ain't gonna happen So Troy is also the brains behind the recirculating shower. Here's the thing it is still in the R&D stages Recirculating shower the only person that can put it into vans is Troy, but do not call him <laughs> or email him saying I want the recirculating shower in my van why is that? Because he is booked solid for like 18 months, I'd say at least. Something like that. Maybe even two years. He is booked, booked, booked. I have been waiting, I don't know, six months to even see this guy. Now, will he have a sort of uh, same thing with the recirculating shower as with the system here in the radiant floor heating? Yes, he will. When is that going to hit market? I'm thinking by the end of 2019, but we were not 100% sure on that. I hope to get it into my van, but I have to actually go to Portland, which is where Troy's shop is, to get that installed by him because I can't even do it. An affiliate upfitter cannot do it. So really, only one man on earth can do his system for the recirculating shower, which, what does it use, 1.5 gallons? Yeah, our current alpha units that we have in the field are running about one and a half gallons per shower. Fill the system, gallon and a half, you can shower for 
however let you want, 20 minutes, two people can use it, whatever you want to do. Just uh, water quality testing wise and stuff, we're not that far to see how long you'd want to keep that water. But I mean, really, if you take a 20 minute shower on a gallon and a half of water with great pressure and whatever temperature you want it, yeah. that's already a huge win in, in van life. So yeah, I want to take a- like, It's not the on off, scrub it down and try not to waste all your water shower. So. Uh, anybody in van life knows exactly what the heck Troy is talking about yes, because we all- in there, that's why we try to improve these systems. Yes, so. very much so. Hopefully this helped a little bit. I know this really wasn't so much a build series, but this is going to be an episode. I'm now going to be using Troy's system as my heat and hot water, and that's how it's done. Uh, yes, you do have to put the heat, the floor heating in first, right? <laughs> I mean, virtually first, uh, you know, you can maybe put up the insulation and the wall paneling, but really you can't do much else. He has to have entire access or an affiliate upfitter has to have the entire access to the entire floor. My van, we added two inches to the floor. Was that about right? It might have been two and a quarter. <clears throat> Yeah, I think you were at two inches just because you used a thicker base insulation. It normally adds um, about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, um, yeah. depending on kind of the preferred insulation detail. The floor system itself is three quarters of an inch thick. So, um, and then with our preferred insulation detail, the full added height to your factory floor. Is about an inch and a half. So, yeah. And a lot of people ask about, you know, in the garage, out of the garage, is it just where I walk? That seems like a crazy amount of money for just where I walk. And those people are like mostly confused, so I never gave prices. Yeah, I know, and it's, I'm sure it'll it'll show up. It'll eventually Upfitters, show up. Upfitters can give pricing, so. But the the thing is, there is it's it's not the tile warming mats that end up going just where you walk. Oh, that's it's, huge! I, I want it's that. It's a full hydronic heat system, and so the whole idea is to get as much floor area as possible because we're trying to heat the van with those BTUs. So. Um, it goes the entire subfloor system. We have full fitted kits for the ProMasters, the Transits, and the Sprinters. Good call. Any of the body links in any of those sizes. But that ends up giving us around 55 to 80 BTUs a square foot. And so, you're, you know, that is the primary heat for the van. And then the fan coil is like an auxiliary or supplementary heat. So, um, anyway. For the questions out there, yes, he does not. He not, not only does Sprinter, which is what I'm in for Ghost 2, but does have a ProMaster kit and does have a Transit kit. Sold on one of those two vans or has one of those two vans and you're looking into this system, he's got you covered. Contact one of the affiliates. I will probably list all the affiliates in the description below and I'll try and pin a comment of uh, affiliate upfitters. Um, you can also attempt to email Troy, but he is in inundated with uh, emails, hundreds of emails daily and um, we, he tries to get back to everybody as, as quickly as possible and he can sell you the kit, right? And then he can uh, yeah, give suggestions can also, on affiliates. We can do that, yeah. Um, so while we're figuring out what we're doing on the DIY stuff, we have sold kits and then hooked up um, affiliated installers. So, you know, you can get a hold of us, we can sell you a kit, and then I can put someone regionally in contact with you to be able to get installed for you, so. And if you're an upfitter, yep. if you're an upfitter, um, please contact Troy at info at uh, vanlifetech.com uh, and let him know that you are an upfitter and you want to be trained to put in that system and he will walk you through everything and then we will add you to this list. So it's really important to kind of get that all going. So Yeah, and one thing, um, you know, feel free to email us at the info at vanlifetech. Um, we do have a, a client management system. so. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to get back to someone with an actual person replying in 24 to 48 hours. It's kind of a generic email, but it's not an autoresponder. So we do mm -hmm. that to make sure you know that you are in our management system and that you're on our radar and that it didn't just go into a black hole. So if you do email us, you should hear back from us in 24 to 48 hours. And then once that happens, trust that you're actually in our client management system and we will get to you on a personal basis. There you so go. That way you know it doesn't just go into a black hole because I know how frustrating that is. We're gonna wrap this up right now. Like I said, there's not much details I can give about this video, but I did want to try and give as much detail as possible. I'm glad I was able to get Troy on because it's really important for you guys to know the, the system that I'm not only using, but and now it is offered to pretty much everybody out there that wants to do a new van build. Honestly, I've been in the vans that have these. I can't wait to turn mine on. Mine's not even on yet. An hour. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be on in like an hour, but when it's on, it is going to be one of the most epic ways to heat your van. Like I said, I've been in other vans that have it, and it is a complete game changer. There's a story that Troy told me last night, I wanna say. One of his friends was in the polar vortex that we had this 
this past winter, which was like 40 below. I don't know if it was that cold, but it was cold in the Michigan area. Was it Michigan? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That was in uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I think it was uh, Indiana. Indiana. It was in Indiana. Indiana. It was yeah. Dead of Remember winter. That, that whole thing that went through the Midwest this winter as far as the freezing temp. Yeah, and it was cold, guys. It was it was like, it was 20 below, 30 below, 40 below in, in, in certain areas. It was cold. Yeah. And they had a house to stay in. They ditched the house they were in to go back out to their van because they had Troy's system in there because they said the van was more comfortable to sleep in. The van was warmer than the house. Yeah, it was uh, It was a pretty funny story. That's crazy. It is an absolute game changer, especially for you ski bums out there because there's really, I mean, guys, I got cold in, in LA last year. I'm gonna turn this bad boy on as much as I can. I have family in Boston. I'm gonna go see them over the winter time. But anyways, guys, this is it. Like, I've, I've, I've talked enough. I'm gonna let Troy get back to work so he can finish my damn van. Next episode, I actually think that we're gonna actually go tackle Tiny Watt Solar and see what they're up to. My electrical box was being built today. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.